hey, great friends, on a Tuesday afternoon, we're going to put the whole mishbucha back together today. Billy Ray's in the house. Linda Welby's coming. Put the three of us all together. And all of a sudden, everybody, for the first time in a long time, through all of the COVID and through everything that's happened in U.S. history in the last three weeks, we're putting the whole show back together today. And I will tell you in advance, I will tell you, things do get kind of weird when we haven't <laughs> all been together in a really long time and there's little delays with the zoom call and you know, we're all not the same people we once were. I'm telling you right now, take the three of us add Billy Ray and Linda and things do get a little strange this afternoon. Let me say hello to me, hermano numero uno, grande Alejandro Padilla, the pride of the 805. What's going on, Alex? Not much, man. That was a very long conversation, though, with everybody. It was nice to see everybody. Regardless of how the conversation goes, every time we get together, I still love seeing everybody. Glad to see everybody's healthy. Yep, me too. What do you, what do you say today, John Browner? Bang, bang. Shout out to Dave Chappelle. Saw the special multiple times. Check it out. That's it. You know what? I'm going to say something really quick about Dave Chappelle and his special. I, I like Dave. I, I'm not I'm not as big a Dave Chappelle fan as I know a lot of other people are. It's very hip to say that he's the genius and he's the goat of comedians. Um, I like Dave Chappelle. I don't The goat love, is Richard Pryor. Well, I'm just telling you. I mean, Kevin Hart was recently on Joe Rogan's Stop podcast, it. called him the goat. And I just, Stop it. I, I just want to say something. You know what? I think David Chappelle's funny, but I don't think he, like for me, he not Eddie Murphy. Uh, he's not Chris Rock, you know, and, 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 and yet there's this weird feeling like that Dave Chappelle is in some way intellectually better or funnier than those dudes. I don't really get why that is. And even his, his Netflix special from last year, I told you, I didn't really love it. Um, I liked it, but I didn't love it. I watched Dave Chappelle's special last night on, on YouTube and I watched the whole thing and I could feel his anger about the eight minutes and 26 seconds, right? I mean, I, I could feel his anger and I appreciated his anger. And I thought, this is kind of cool. He's not here to make us laugh. And then it got funny, kind of, but it wasn't really a comedy show of any kind. It was Dave Chappelle, somebody you know and like as a comedian who took, you know, half an hour to just kind of ramble at you over his anger of what's going on in America right now. I mean, I don't know what was so brilliant about it. I'll keep this short. It encapsulated the current temperature and climate of where we are in society and why celebrities should shut up and let this happen. I did like what he was saying about, look, there's nothing I can do. I mean, you know, I I'm not going to be out there protesting people. Are, he even called out Don Lemon. I, I, I mentioned Don Lemon because Don Lemon drive me a little crazy right now. Um, but a lot crazy, actually. And, and I love that Dave Chappelle called him out. But my God called this brother the n-word like 500 times <laughs> <laughs> i just think like dave Chappelle's on a different level of, of comedy i'm not talking about like whether he's the funniest or the greatest or whatever i think he's reached a certain level after the Chappelle show and after the whole uh uh comedy central thing where now it's like people look at him for commentary not so much yeah. jokes yeah and that's yeah. why i liked it yeah, i liked it. i mean I, I, liked laugh? It. I don't even think i laughed once but no, i laughed a couple i times. enjoy i enjoyed the whole thing but i i I'm not talking about his comedic thing. I just think for commentary purposes, he's he just hit the nail on the head for this. Yeah. YouTube no, I, I liked it. I liked it a lot. I, I mean, I, I just didn't, I just don't know why I, I just listened to him and I'm like, yeah, okay. He's, he's just a guy who's got a strong opinion. He's, a, he's good at articulating that opinion. Uh, when he lands a joke, he has this habit. Smacking it, the mic. It drives me nuts. It, it as his viewer, mm -hmm. it drives me crazy. Again, I love Chris Rock. I love Eddie Murphy. I, I love George Carlin. I love Robert Klein. Uh, these are the comedians that I happen to really, really love. Um, Chris, or, uh, Dave Chappelle's good. I always liked his Comedy Central show. One of my favorite bits that he ever did was, did was the, the blind white supremacist who's a black man. And he doesn't, Clinton Bigsby. Yeah, he doesn't realize that he's black. He just knows that he hates black people. And he's blind. So he has no idea that he's black, <laughs> which was one of the funniest bits ever. But, you know, I, I'll go back to Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy had a bit. You guys will never have seen this. I guarantee it. But many, many years ago, Eddie Murphy had a bit on Saturday Night Live where he played a character called Mr. White. And they took Eddie Murphy 
and his black skin and they painted him white, you know, and he walks real uptight and he's got a briefcase and he walks into a bank and he says, um, so I'd like to get a loan. And the white banker sitting across the table from Eddie Murphy says, so let me get this straight. You have no job. You have no collateral. You have no nothing. And Eddie Murphy goes, that's right. And he goes, okay, we can do this loan for you. And he takes cash, wads of cash, and he's handing Eddie Murphy, you know, stacks. Of, and Eddie Murphy's like, you know what happens when white people get together? They just give stuff to each other. They just give it to them. He walks into a, into a, a little uh, um, like grocery store, buys a newspaper, a drink, goes to put money down on the table. The white clerk goes, what are you doing, man? He goes, he goes like this. He goes, why I'm buying this newspaper. And he goes, no, oh, man, take it. Nobody's looking. Just take it. <laughs> and so, <laughs> one, of the, one of the funnier parts of that sketch is when he gets off the bus. The last black guy gets off the bus and it's just like all white people left on the bus and the bus is like super awesome. <laughs> and they start partying, right? As soon as yeah. the black guy gets off the bus and it's only white people, there's a girl serving drinks. You know, yeah. she's in a cocktail outfit. I mean, this is brilliant. That is brilliant stuff. I like Dave Chappelle's special. I found it to be a, a hard hitting piece of social commentary. It was not particularly funny. Um, although there were some parts that were funny and I just, uh, I think Dave Chappelle, it's just very fashionable to hail him as some genius, but I think Dave Chappelle got most of his appeal and most of his, uh, acknowledgement when he took, when he told comedy Central, fuck your money. Yeah, I'm out. That's right. And yeah. people, and people saw that as a way of him doing the OJ thing. He beat the system. He didn't need the system. He beat the system. By the way, you realize it was 20 years ago, you know, OJ, no Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle Listen, leaving we, Comedy Central was like 20 years ago. Beating a man is timeless. They still run the Chappelle <laughs> show. No, I know. I mean, listen, he's, he's, he guys, guys had a, a phenomenal, brilliant career. Okay, listen, let me do this. I want to say to everybody who's tuning in today, thank you for being here as always. I want to thank all of our great sponsors right at the top. Corky's Pest Control, 1-800-901-1102. Browner, what is the deal? I've sent emails. I've made introductions. I sent you Fritz from, from Corky's, who's Corky's right-hand man. I put you together with everybody. Tell me where we are in getting rid of the bugs. They own the way, baby. They own the way. Little, you hooked it up. Email back and forth. Pion, 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 pion. About to be dead roaches. <laughs> that was rats. Them too. Everybody dying. <laughs> All rodents. Hey, hey, um, Cork. Can someone write me a check for thirty-five bucks? I refer to great friend. This dude's becoming a Corky's customer. Give me the $35. You know what I'm saying? So oh, works, about right. refer a great friend and you're getting 35 bucks. In this case, I don't, I don't need a cork. I want you to just go service this young man and take care of his rats and his rodents and whatever else he might have. Uh, thank you. Corky's pest control. 1-800-901-1102. Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services. I've been meaning to do this. Maybe you guys could do this today. If you don't mind, I want to put out on social media, Gary showing the skeletons their new home and giving them the keys. That is something that our whole social media audience should see. We should put it out on, on uh, we should even put it on YouTube for crying out loud. Um, but we really should put this out. It was so special and it was so awesome. So never make a move in real estate without calling Gary Cooper, 858-376-1299. He has literally helped hundreds of great friends save hundreds of thousands of dollars. So whether you're looking to buy, sell, refinance, Gary Cooper can help you with all of it. Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services, 858-376-1299. And lastly, I want to thank Tory Holistics. Hey, Alex, are we going to bring Ruthie from Tory Holistics on on Friday for a little Father's Day Tory Holistics Yeah, I wanted to talk to you specials? about that. I'll talk to you about that off air. Okay, you got it. Um, Ruthie, I know you get into our YouTube chat. But this week, chat. for sure. Yeah, we got to talk to Ruthie because there are a lot of Father's Day specials happening at Tory Holistics. You can use our promo code GRANDE to save 20%. And the best thing for you to do is really just go to our website, scottandbr.com, and all of our advertisers are there and all of the links are there. And Alex, I'm telling you right now, the website, your cousin has done such a great job. The website looks amazing. It's cool. So, yeah. Okay, so let's jump right into it. Special shout outs to the Total T Clinic, Rock and Wine Tours, smsglobal.com, our texting partners. We appreciate you guys so much. And um, 
here it goes, man. We just let it fly. I tell you things get a little bit weird, but we're going to talk about all the things that you know that Linda and Billy Ray would like to jump into that they haven't had a chance to, from Kaepernick to the NFL to Drew Brees to, to all of the big stories that are happening that these guys would want to talk about. Here's the whole mishbucha back together again. Everybody can, can hear you. Can I turn my phone off or should I just let it interrupt us as normal? <laughs> you, know what, yeah. you, know, Leave it on. you know what to do, Linda. Well, um, sure. You're already recording. I hope, right? I've been recording. Great. Let's just let's just jump into it. Linda just said, and and maybe this was all caught. Oh, there's Billy Ray. He got a little <laughs> old Jack in the Box. Look at that. Thing. <laughs> Look, it looks like it's Billy version, Ray. <laughs> I have a large version of that in my garage as a Halloween costume. Billy Ray, it looked like that was the. Head, it looked like your head, like the way that's you. That's what had. I was. Yes, that's the effect I was going for, Scott. Thank you very much. So I feel like Scott and Brown are oh, totally, totally messed okay. up. Scott and Brown needs to put some college clothes on. See Berkeley. Right. I see Arkansas, San Diego State. I'm mean, Bulls is is his university, I guess. But come on, Scott. That's you, I know. You're yes, I right. I didn't get any. I just had some Callaway love today, and this is you know pretty much free sweatshirt. So. That's that's the deal. That's a nice uh, one. It's nice. It's warm. I know. And does everybody have their Gatorade? Uh, got beverage. Oh oh. What, oh. what 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 is the beverage? That looks like vodka. Vodka. Of course, it's vodka. <laughs> right. <laughs> I've been I've been binge watching The Americans, so I'm all about the vodka now. Oh no. How is well, that show? I've never here's watched the star it. Star of the show, by the way. So good. Oh. <laughs> 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 that is a big cat. Oh, so cute. That is oh a ginormous God. feline. That is. Oh, like meow. Meow. Alice in Wonderland. Meow. So <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye-bye. <laughs> Billy Ray, this is the first time that we've ever seen you in this particular room as we've done these, these video conference broadcasts. Mm -hmm. Um, where, where are you at in, in, in the crib today? There's a lot of this good is, sports this is, memorabilia. This is kind of our office. And um, I didn't let Kim put any of her stuff up, but I, I covered it with, with my stuff. But so her, her stuff is right over there. It's always, it's always fun for us to, to see what's going on. You know, there's Kimberly's oh. television studio. That's, that's, Look at that. that's the that's, Emmy. Look at all those Emmys. Wow. That's so cool. That's really nice, man. Look at that lighting and everything. This is home TV studio. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Now, now as you turn it back around, can we see some of the sports memorabilia? Yeah, let's see what you got going on there. We got some of those. Whoa. Whoa. We got, oh, my helmet. That's where it will. <laughs> uh, let's see. There's Charger stuff. helmet. Yeah. The Hall of Fame thing up there. Yeah, one of my favorite days ever. What what's your favorite thing that you have there? What's your what what means the most to you there? I'll show you right here. There you, you go. See the rabbit. Yep. Nice. There you go. Number seventy four, Billy Ray Smith Senior. You got it. That's sweet. That's um, the best. That's the highlight of the room. Billy Ray, wait that, one more that's thing. That's picture that looks like Rob Gronkowski. Yeah, I have one more question. Wait, oh Bill, Billy Ray, I have one more. <laughs> it does. <laughs> I have one more thing I want to see, Billy Ray. Um, to the left of your dad's picture, to the left of your dad's picture, there's a television monitor. That's from 1983. Oh, the Sony TV. <laughs> Let me see it. Oh, right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a, a, a Billy Ray? Does will that thing really turn on? Dude, I bought it from you. <laughs> yes. It's, and and, and it's, it's such an interesting way of watching television now, if anybody still has a, an old box TV. Let's see if the picture comes up. Well, I have... Ah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Come and do it. Looks like HBO's oh, about to go. start. See, I, I, uh, the reason his is snow now is because I've got this here. Yeah. So, because she needs, I, I she needs a really table. good one. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Oh my God, that is so cute, though. I, I, I have right here. Hold on, Billy Ray, you'll love this. Wait, okay. I have. Hold on, let me, let me match your television. Give me I'm one. Holding second. on, Scott. Stop <laughs> saying, hold on.
Oh no. Uh, no you combo. Oh no, you did. Nice combo. Damn, you know, this just came in the mail. Oh wow. Someone, is, someone sent you that. Wait, no, the camera right here. Where, where? Bill and Dan Marino. Oh wow. Someone just sent nice. it. Nice. That's cool. That is very cool. <laughs> I think Dan Marino sent it to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that old TV that you have and this old VCR DVD burner. By the way, this this was a piece of, of machinery that when I bought this thing, uh -huh. I thought I'm going to take VHS tapes and I'm going to burn them onto DVDs. Ooh. I think even at that time it might have been CDs. You know, yeah. so maybe what I might have to do, Billy Ray, is borrow your TV to. I think the only way the there, only there thing be that, no borrowing of my TV. <laughs> no borrowing. You keep your hands off my stuff. Not that, Jim. It, it, it all works right now, and as soon as you walk up here, <laughs> <laughs> not gonna do it, pal. So Linda started off at the very beginning of all this by saying, "There's a lot going on in the last few weeks in the world," and and I said, "Whoa, hold on! Don't talk about that stuff yet. Let's wait until we get on." So. I'm not sure, Alex, if you caught that part of the early recording or not, but uh, man, there has been so much stuff since this whole mishbucha has been together that has been going on in this world. And um, I, anybody, Linda, you got any opening thoughts about the world of the last month since we've all been together? I think um, like most people, I'm just really overwhelmed. You know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of stuff coming at us. There's a lot of stuff, but at the same time, there's a lot of movement in the right direction as well as a result of that. So, you know, it's just, uh, I, I gotta be honest. I've, I've dialed back the news quite a bit <clears throat> just for my own, you know, mental health. It's just, it's, it's, it's sad and, and, uh, you know, I, I honestly don't know what to say about it. Well, I, I agree with you. I, I've dialed back the news too. I mean, I didn't even know about the Atlanta situation until about 24 hours after it had happened over the past weekend. Cause I was like, I just got to get away from all of this. You know, I'd been two weeks just totally entrenched from the time George Floyd was murdered on the streets of Minneapolis until after Drew Brees' apology to the NFL you know, uh, also apologizing. And then all the way until the protests and everybody kind of went home and said, it's been two weeks, but man, it's, um, it has been a, it has been a crazy time. And it's everything, you know, it's the COVID, it's the whole, the whole thing, but you know, at the same time, you know, you just, know just throw in that COVID just to make I it, know, you know, I just have to throw in the COVID, but you, I don't know. And I'm not, I'm not thinking for John Browner here, but you know, perhaps his uh, perspective is, Hey, Nice to have that luxury to turn it off, you know, <laughs> when you don't want to listen to it anymore. <laughs> uh, I, I think, I think for, for me, there, this is, and this is just me personally, I feel like this is not the time to look away. I think this is the time to, to give it as much attention as you possibly can stomach, because I think uh, for too long, people have been able to turn to sports or to turn to this movie being out or to turn to this show being on. And unfortunately, but fortunately, those things have now, because of coronavirus, all been stripped away from people. So now you can't, the only thing you can turn to is it that or to completely unplug. And I think a lot of people need to unplug because uh, uh -huh. we, we don't really get that. We don't really get that time with our loved ones. And COVID has unfortunately given that to us, for some of us. But at the same time, it's also given us what happened to George Floyd. It's also given us more awareness on, on uh, social uh, discourse. And it's good and bad. So I don't, I mean, I, for me, it's not the time to look away, but I could understand why people can't stomach this anymore. Dude, the world has changed so much in the last three weeks that Roger Goodell is now saying to all NFL owners, you know what? Um, if Colin Kaepernick wants to resume his career, then there's going to be a team that has to do that. But I welcome that. I mean, here's Roger Goodell, a guy who four years ago, essentially, was, was saying, you stand during the anthem. If you don't stand, you're a bad guy. You don't support America. And there's no place for you in the NFL. And this guy has been excommunicated from the NFL. And now, now it's like, yeah, 
sign this guy. Somebody sign this man. This is how much the world has done a 180, a reverse. That's the, Linda, you said it. You know, a lot of good may be coming from a really tragic situation. This is a complete reversal of, of philosophy from the NFL. And I know a lot of us were like, wait a second, you're supposed to stand during the national anthem. That's what we were taught as kids. And now a lot of people are going, yeah, but you've got the right to peacefully protest and it's cool and uh, it's fine. And so that, that is how, I mean, just that's one example in the world of sports and that's close to us that the world has just completely changed and, and reversed course. Yeah, but does Kaepernick, does he want to play? I know a lot of people want him to play, but after that last exhibition, does he want to? I don't even think he wants to play. Well, oh, the other question he's... that Browners asked is, is do you even want him to sign if you were on his team in the first place? Because now they could use him as a political prop, basically. Right, right. Yeah, yeah but that works to, both ways. Back... It, well, it, does, it does. What do you mean, Billy Ray? It works both ways. What do you mean? Uh, well, I actually mean it works both ways. <laughs> there's going to be some people here, and there's going to be uh, some fans and some people that, that don't like the guy. I mean, it's it, it's going to work that that way every time. That that's that's true from a fan standpoint of people not liking the original uh, stance on the protest. What I was saying, what Alex was referring to a couple of days ago, is if you are if you've been in his camp this entire time, you also know the NFL is making this sea change for political reasons. They're not just doing this because it's the right thing to do. They're doing this because there's an avalanche of, of, of public voices saying that this isn't right, this isn't right, and they're just getting ahead of it. If you sign him, they're going to hold him up and say, see, we get it. We're on the side. We're on the right side of this now. Yes, we apologize for the mistake, but look, we're giving him millions of dollars to play football. Isn't that what everybody wanted? All right, go back to look, being mad at the police because we did the right thing. And I, yeah. and I don't know if that's the message that they want to convey. So what's going to happen when everybody tries to sign him? What's going to happen? <laughs> the, uh, his, his services will go to the highest bidder. Yeah. <laughs> oh, believe for him. Or, uh, yeah, maybe so. I don't know. I don't know. Do you think he's going to play? No, no. To be me, personally, no. I don't think he's going to play because I think he – one, I, I think he knows what the NFL is doing. As much as he may still have football in him, I don't know if he wants to be used as a, as a shield for the shield, so to speak. So uh, I, I doubt it, but I wouldn't be surprised if he did. I don't think he will, though. You know, it's funny, though, Linda, you say, um, does he want to play? And, and, you know, you say after the last – spectacle that he put on you know we all remember what happened late last year there was going to be this workout teams were going to be invited then it didn't work the way he wanted or the way it was supposed to or the way it was advertised they moved it to a high school field and then he stood there afterwards and he had you know he, hey I'm glad all you people are here I want to play how come people didn't come etc the NFL at that point was still saying we're not really interested in you you know but but now post George Floyd post, you know, protests and looting and riots and burning and then peaceful protests in the two weeks or three weeks after this conversation comes back and there's Roger Goodell sitting in his home going, we're so sorry. Oh my God. We're so sorry. We were so white and we were so naive and we were so caught up in our own um, whiteness and our privilege that we didn't even hear the message. So four years later, we're sorry. And by the way, Somebody want to sign this guy? Go ahead. Sign him. Every, everybody's going to want to sign that guy. Every, that would be so? interesting. Do you think so? Do you I think do. everybody's going to want to sign him? I mean, could I you imagine? Know. Can you imagine Jerry Jones? No, in, no. In the Dallas <laughs> County. Oh no, no, no. He's the one. He's the one guy who hasn't said a single word during all this. Who was very loud the Jerry first time Jones. around? Yeah, I don't know, man. Why not? Why, but, but why, I mean, I'm with Billy Ray. Everybody should want to sign him now. Everybody should want to be on the right side, you know? So why not? How about this one? I'll give you this one. You ready? Here's who should sign him. I came up with Minnesota, Billy Ray. But how about this? I got a new one for you. You ready? New Orleans. Well, they have like four <laughs> quarterbacks already, dude. Who cares? <laughs> who cares? Who cares? Now, why, no. why New Orleans? Because of Drew Brees? Because yeah, of Drew Brees. Because, because, because Drew Brees 
had the audacity, how dare him, to say that he still supports standing for the, for the national anthem. And um, as a result, he offended many people, um, probably because he was just naive, frankly, uh, probably because he's not uh, a great student of American history, obviously. And so Drew Brees offended and pissed off a whole bunch of people. But if the New Orleans Saints signed Colin Kaepernick, now it's Drew Brees, and I helped get this man back in the league. I told you I was going to do something big is what I did. What do you think of that? But, those, but that's the whole point of why I'm saying he won't play because he would be the fourth quarterback on their depth chart behind Jameis Winston, Taysom Hill, who everybody thinks apparently is Dan Marino, and now Colin Kaepernick. So he wouldn't even get a chance to take a real legit snap. Like, now, if you told me Jacksonville was going to sign him, I'd be like, okay, that makes sense. But if you, if you told me somebody with a, a up-in-the-air quarterback situation, like the Raiders were going to sign him, the where he had a legit – Come on, man. What you doing? Why? Why you got to do that? Sorry, dude. It's, Why just you gotta, it's just easy. You know, but before it gets too far down the line, um, you mentioned Dan Marino. And, you know, it just it you hate conjured, him? It, it conjured some memories of what, what was it that it was the opening game in 87. And I, I think I put Dan on his ass four times. And it was, it was one of the great, it was one of the great, games because it was Marino and me and we, we, we've been hanging out, you know, for a couple of years when we were in college. So it was, uh, it was a really nice memory. Thank you very much. Okay. So let's say, let's say that happens to, let's say that happens to Kaepernick. You know, he's been sitting out all this time. And now, and now Kaepernick gets, gets a shot and he just is just no good. Sucks. That's not Which is very good. well possible, by the yeah. way. Which is a possibility. Yeah. yeah. I don't think but anybody's here, here's, saying here's, he's going to come in and, like, light it up and be an MVP. I just think everybody just wants to give him a, a chance, you know? Right. Well, but, by the way, he, he might be good. Shot. He might be really good. I mean, well, listen, yeah. there, I, I don't know exactly how old he is, but let's just say he's 30, 31. We can look it up real quick. Kaepernick is a guy who I can point out other quarterbacks who in their careers didn't really start to take off until they were in their early 30s. They served as a backup. They barely ever saw the field. Everybody who says that this guy hasn't played in all these years, yeah, he, not only has he not played, he hasn't practiced. I mean, other than his own workouts. He's going to be 33 in November. He's 30. Okay, so good. I, I would give yeah. him today. I, w- I would give him today based on conditioning and based on what we see of other quarterbacks. The guy can play till he's 40. We did just have four years off, so he's fresh. Right, right. <laughs> fresh legs. That fresh legs. Sense? Yeah. <laughs> fresh legs or stiff, either one. Linda, yeah. you, seem, you seem very skeptical that he could come back and, and still play. Yeah, I am. He was on the decline, right? Like his record. No. Was, his Stop record, dude, it. he was one in no. 10 with his last year, dude. What do you mean? He's okay. going to get a shot, guys. You know that. <laughs> Yes, he's going to get a shot. But to say that he was on a decline because of the, his record, the team, the 49ers as an organization at that time, was in turmoil. Mm-hmm. Part, Every, in, 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 part in, because in, the quarterback in, was playing bad. Yes, in, no, no, yes. no. In, like, large part. Like, 99%. Nah, that's too much. 90% of the turmoil that was created during that time was – he was self-inflicted at the time. But that didn't, that didn't stop – he didn't sign any of the players. He didn't make Jim Harbaugh become, uh, I don't know, uh, I, I can't really – No, he tore the, he, he, to he everyone t- else in the front office. No, he tore, like, the team was torn apart. The team was torn up. The locker room was torn apart. The organization was torn apart. Yeah, I mean, it happened. Right, and so, so that contributed to the lack of play on the field. Did, was he um, MVP level? Of course not. Was he, have, was he hurt and playing at a down point in his career? Absolutely. But that happens to everybody. Guys have up and down years. Tom Brady has had up and down years. Dan Marino, after Billy Ray kicked his ass, that was probably a down time <laughs> in a year. <laughs> it happens to guys. He never Some played happen. another game. <laughs> Took him out forever. <laughs> how about this? How about, how about you, you ruined how, him. You ruined him. You ruined him forever. That's oh. why he never won a Super Bowl, Billy Ray. It's your fault. <laughs> How about I'll throw this one at you? You ready? I, I came up with the Vikings. John Browner says no to the Vikings for Colin Kaepernick. He says because it's just the NFL using him. I've said the Saints 
And you guys have said no, because that's just, again, Breeze, the NFL, trying to recover somebody's image there. I mentioned the Cowboys, America's team. I mean, this is your America's team. This is America's story. The Cowboys, but Jerry Jones has been on his yacht in the Bay of San Diego. I'm trying to think of teams that could or would want to sign him. I saw the other day um, somebody had written a, a post about that the Rams should sign him because he'd be better than their backups. Let me throw one other idea at you. You talk about a team that needs something, a spark. Yeah. How about the Chargers? I knew you were we knew, that. We yep. knew you were coming up. They with just that. drafted well, their spark. I know, but there's only 32 teams, so I'm just gonna I'm going down the list. If if you're if you've got Tyrod Taylor and you've got this young kid Herbert, there is room for a third quarterback. And by the way, I would advertise it if I were Anthony Lynn, African American coach who wants to give this guy his shot. Hey, come in and compete for the job. You know, it makes why sense not because of the African American coach. I think you know, but but uh, Kaepernick wouldn't sign with the Chargers. Hmm. As a fact. As a fact, he would not sign with the Chargers because uh, if he's going to go back and play, and that's truly what he wants to do, he also is going to use it as a platform. And when you use something as a platform, you need an audience. Right. And the oh. Chargers <laughs> do not have an audience. Mm -hmm. How about the Broncos? They got, they, they, they're putting their future on a guy named Drew Locke. Who else have they got there? Nobody. People John know, Elk. but people... And John Elway was very like anti kneeling and Colin Kaepernick. It would be a significant signing for the Broncos. They tried to sign him at one point. They People said they offered really him a contract. The How There's another the one of Billy Ray's jet? friends, put John Elway. In New York City. <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. There's a, there's always the Zoom delay when yeah, we talk yeah, over said each other. The Jets. Yeah, and the Giants. Put them in New York City. I think those are both legit calls. They're, oh, they're, thank you, Scott. Now you've made me legitimate. Wow. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, you, you got a lot of it. attitude today. You got a lot. You can't say anything yeah, around you today oh, without really? you getting oh, I guess, it one. must it you, must be the it must be the Dan Marino sack <laughs> picture that makes you feel tough today. And for you forgot you were old and no longer a tough guy. <laughs> <laughs> you tried to steal his TV. Yeah. <laughs> right. That and I almost broke his TV. Yeah. <laughs> 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 And I'm not in front of you, so I can kind of get away with a few things That's today. True. Uh, He's, the tiger. He's the Tiger. He's the Tiger. You didn't see this protection? Mm. The giant feline? I know. He's got that big cat. He got that big wild cat in that house. Right. By the way, what do you make of this? Let me ask you this question. I thought you were going to ask what he's drinking because I was curious. A margarita? <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Nice. Gatorade. Vodka and margaritas. Mm -hmm. Nice. Gatorade, boys. It is Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere. Thank Somewhere in the future. <laughs> let, me, let me get your opinion on this, though. You ready? Sure. So we all saw what happened to our man, Drew Brees. And it's kind of like the way people were coming at me was like guilty by association. You are guilty. You have, you have been the biggest Drew Brees ass kisser on the planet for the last 20 years. Well, You're true. guilty by association. Yes, it is pretty much true. Um, but I just thought the whole story was just bizarre from the why is he being interviewed about this or why is he answering this right now to the, the what he said, how it upset people, to the apology thereafter. Exactly, um, exactly the way you would expect Drew Brees to deal with a problem. Something comes up, he looks at it, he realizes, okay, I was wrong, and he, and he makes things good. But what, A, what was he, this is where you talk about both sides. You know, you were saying it goes both ways earlier. It goes both ways here with Drew Brees too, right? Like for people that he... When he said what he said, there were plenty of people in America that went, damn right, Drew Brees. And then when he apologized, those same people were like, what are you doing apologizing? So, so some people... Well, do you think he believed it? Do you think he believed his apology? <laughs> I'm looking at Alex and he's shaking his head no. I know, I know what Browner's thinking because we've been here. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't yeah, you are, you are, I bet. Well, I, what I said was that what kind of what Billy Ray said, but in a different way. I think Bill, I think Drew Brees. I think Drew Brees is just a uh, 
for some reason, he answered that question. And then he doubled down with a statement saying, I still believe that. And then he went on full PR saving grace mode. Right. And that's what I was expecting kind of right away. Because I feel like Drew Brees has a, a machine behind him. So that's why mm-hmm. I don't, I wouldn't necessarily say it was unauthentic. It just really wasn't what he actually believed. He just got freaking slammed for 24 hours. So it gets very confusing then, you know? I mean, so if he believes one thing, I mean, look at what happened with Kaepernick. Kaepernick believed one thing, made a statement about it, and was squashed down for it. Yep. Drew believes one thing, he made a statement about it, and he squashed down for it. Did you miss the, the show? difference? Did the you miss difference the sh- in the squash down, though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the level of squash is, is a little different, Colin Kaepernick lost any opportunity at a career going forward because like as alex said he was in a decline he no i understand that but what i'm saying is could could if drew Brees kept the double down right and didn't apologize could it have gone kaepernick like like no he, no well no. If, if there's no. oh. somebody that can really comment on this uh that really knows drew Brees, i don't know if any of you had a personal relationship like i did but he thought about it. He knew he was wrong and he apologized. And that was Drew Brees. That's exactly how you expect Drew Brees to react. Uh, my my and, thought. And, and Scott, I, I know you know, don't know Drew Brees. <laughs> uh, and near, none of you people know Drew Brees <laughs> like people. I know Drew Brees. You people. So shut up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I agree that with Billy Ray actually God on this. I didn't sleep with him. <laughs> he wanted to. I, did, I mean, I may have wanted to, but I never actually yeah, right. got to. <laughs> never got to close the deal. Oh, you know? oh, oh my God. boy. What you is know? happening right now? Yeah, no kidding. I, I kind of agree with Billy Ray that that drew he he his comment this is what I've, i feel like i've learned through all of this and i i go back to greg popovich the coach of the of the san antonio spurs who said the other day that when he saw the cops on george floyd particularly the cop who had his knee on his neck he said he had this smug look on his face he had his hands in his pocket he had this look of i'm able to do this and and what 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 Popovich said was, as a white man in America, I'm embarrassed by what I saw. And I think for Drew Brees, I think what happened was he, this is my thought, he just doesn't know American history. And by the way, I would argue many of us didn't know American history. Many white people did not know how American history impacted people black people who had come back and served in the same war that Drew Brees talked about his grandfathers. You know, Drew Brees hails his grandfathers as war heroes, and so does Malcolm Jenkins um, or other black players. They feel the same way about their grandfathers, but they had two different experiences. Drew's grandfather hailed as a hero. They made statues of guys like that, kissing women, leaning them over. The black soldier came home and was not invited into the restaurants, wasn't invited to sit in the front of the bus. And it would occur to me that Drew Brees is just a young, young, early 40s, naive white guy who never thought about how did the history of World War II impact my black teammates and their grandfathers. And he got a real serious history lesson real quick. Oh, and by the way, so did I. I would argue that so did many white people. I would, let me put it this way. John Browner had to tell me what Juneteenth was. I was like, hey, it's June 19th, 619. It's like the uh, area code of San Diego. And John Browner went, well, you know, there's another significance to Juneteenth, right? June 19th, I go, um, I don't know, it's Friday? What, what is it? And he went on to explain to me what Juneteenth means. I didn't know. Linda, do you know? Um, is it when the... Uh like the, the uh, African-American group got together and they created their own stock market. Is that the one? No, I don't think so. No, Bill Ray, that, wait, 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 hold on. Just because I want to, Bill Ray, do you, do you know, and I'm not trying to embarrass you because I'm, I'm admitting I didn't know. You may know. I they didn't got know. Killed. They all got killed, by the way. So that's what happened. But that's what I'm thinking of. 
Okay. Billy Ray, Juneteenth, mean anything to you on you your tell radar? Us. You tell us. Okay. So that means no, which is cool. I didn't know either. I didn't know either. Brown, talk to me about June 19th. Juneteenth. But also, can I ask a question too, John? Did you know like five years ago, 10 years ago, what Juneteenth was? Or are you just knowing now because of the media? No. Uh, and when, I was, when I was growing up, Juneteenth was a big thing because a lot of my family is from Atlanta. Uh, and that Juneteenth has been celebrated within the cult, black culture of the South for a while. It just, as more black people gain prominent positions, it began to come to the forefront to the point now it's on your iPhone calendar. Which uh, I didn't know. June 19th, June 19th is the celebration of the day that slavery was declared illegal in the United States of America and slaves were supposed to be set free. What Linda is referring to is the massacre in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Tulsa, where, that's it. Yes, June 1st, 1921, where a bunch of uh, white people got upset and murdered almost all the prominent business owners and burned down the town in Tulsa, Oklahoma, also known as Black Wall Street. And yeah, so that's what Linda's referring to. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it, it's it, but all those things were there before. They were just never, I think when we talk about history, because I, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but I just want to be honest. When we talk about history in this country, I was taught the same history you guys were taught, white history. The, the, the person who wins the battle tells the story. That's how history works. It always has been over time. We are now coming into a point within the last 15 to 20 years with the explosion of the internet, which a lot of people didn't calculate this for, the knowledge of what actually transpired in this country throughout its history is also able to be told. I don't ever expect for that story to be told in school books. June 1st, 1921 should. Juneteenth probably won't. A lot of- Don't you see though, don't, but don't you see what I'm saying though, dude? It, is, that, is that Drew Brees, if you would have said to Drew Brees a month ago, what does Juneteenth mean? He might have said, I don't know. What does Juneteenth mean? Can we, is that a possibility, right? So Linda didn't know. My goodness, she's taken U.S. history four times. She's had her kids go through high school. She's had to take these classes, Common Core, okay? <laughs> I, I, I did not know what Juneteenth meant. You told me it was in my iPhone. I had no idea. I looked it up. It was. You've told me what it meant since. I've learned a little bit more about it. I had no idea. It's never been on my radar. June 19th is the day where slavery was abolished in America. And by the way, that should be a national holiday. We got lots of national holidays in this country. Juneteenth should be a national holiday. It's a great day in U.S. history that most of us, to your point, John, we learned white U.S. history, okay? Most of us, white guys, sorry, everybody, most of us didn't know. And yeah. But if you... If you, if you tell that story, then th this is why they don't tell that story is because you would, didn't have to tell the story of what happened after they were supposed to be set free and they were not set free. New rules were created. Then you have to tell the story of the origination of policing in this country. And people don't want to tell that story. If you tell that story, then you have to tell the story of why every Christopher Columbus statue in this country needs to be torn down and why you can't fly the Confederate flag. So once you start telling those stories, you have to start telling all these other stories and then that gets too complex. But don't and you I don't, don't you, want to deal with that? But don't you think though that that it's conceivable? Just just put yourself in Drew Brees' shoes. You grow up in Texas, you grow up in a predominantly white neighborhood, you go to a, a, a suburban high school that's got a football stadium that's better than Qualcomm Stadium is today. You, you, you become a Heisman Trophy finalist a couple times and a super All-American and a, and a guy who becomes a high round draft choice and lives his life uh, like a multi-million dollar quarterback and highs and lows, but still just, he's been living his white life guilty. And it's conceivable that his version of American history is my grandfathers went and fought the war and I stand for the flag and I cover my heart and it brings tears to my eyes. Me too. And then when you say, I don't support kneeling and you find out you've offended all your teammates and LeBron James is piling on and the angry mob is going to make you apologize or you're dead meat in this country. And I believe like Billy Ray said earlier, his apology is sincere because it was a wake up call of God, I, I didn't even know. God, I feel also, like a dick. But you also know Drew Brees and, and you know that he, he must have been mortified 
and you know apologizing that's exactly the way i i, I could see drew Brees reacting to that but i also don't think he should have apologized it, it, this is just the truth that this is my truth of the situation and i will always tell people i don't think he should have apologized because he what he said on that yahoo and if you had been San Francisco, well he did and he did so that was good well <clears throat> but was it a sincere apology? Because again, once you start apologizing, do you know people... Drew Brees? Do you know Drew? No. Okay, do I you? Do, and he and he was How? very sincere. Right through a through a piece of paper. Did he call a you? Piece of paper? No. To all of America, right. it was a it was a but <laughs> it was a press. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. It was a press. It just kind of shows you. Call. It just it just goes to show like how difficult it is to have an opinion that's not in the majority and be asked about it over and over and over and over, get slammed, get ridiculed, have the president go after you and still keep your stance. So what Colin Kaepernick right. did for the last four years, Drew Brees couldn't do it for 24 hours. Right. So, you know, that's, good point. And so <laughs> that's, good point. that's like my biggest thing. Somebody like tapped him I, on the shoulder. I get it, dude. And, and if we want to like, if we want to start making excuses for Drew Brees, fine. That could be whatever you guys want to do. But I'm saying, like, it, it keeps getting lost. Always, always. We just keep talking about Drew Brees now. Drew Brees is a great guy. Drew Brees is apologizing. Who gives, who gives the hell, you know? Like, let's t talk about the things that actually matter. The outcry and the fallout of Drew Brees is the bed that he has to live in. And if he really believes that what that history that he grew up in and his grandfathers, and it could mean certain things to everybody. But that's fine. Keep that stance. You couldn't keep it for 24 hours, dude. And you were in a locker room for, with your players for four years. You had Malcolm Jenkins, who was one of the most vocal the guys for four years. The lesson that everybody needs to learn here is study your history. Yeah, and it's like well, it's totally okay. I think I think what Browner said yesterday on yesterday's show is a very good thing. Like if you didn't know then, but you know now, it's okay. Like it's okay not to be like. It, we're not shaming people. That's not what then we're why can't to do. his apology be then why I mean I just want to say though, I mean, I know you guys are down on his apology. And I know Billy Ray is saying, you know, if you know Drew Brees and you know that this is what he means and this is from the heart, why can his apology not really be considered sincere? Let then? me ask you this question. Yeah. Of all the celebrities and athletes that have done something bad or not popular, let's say but not popular, not bad. Just say not popular. Mm -hmm. And they go out and their PR staff writes this incredible apology and you read it. How mm -hmm. many times do you say, okay, that's all. Like, it's not necessarily that it's Drew Brees or whatever. That's all. It's not just Drew. It's everybody that gets slammed on social media for a day or two or a week, get their job threatened, get like fired or whatever. And then they come back and apologize. Are you sorry about what you said? Or are you sorry because of the fallout? That's all I'm asking. I, I, I think, right. I think that's a good it, question. There's just, yeah. there's a fine line though, between, you know, posturing and then the sincerity. I mean, there's just, yeah. it's happening all the time. I mean, look at something, I mean, this is super basic and not sports related, but like the bachelor, they were promoting, we've got the <laughs> first black bachelor. And you're like, how many seasons have you been on? And now, <laughs> You got the first black bachelor. Well, would you have done it otherwise? I don't know. Yeah. You know, so you kind of, when you look at the media and you look at what you see on TV and you go, how much of it is sincere yeah. and moving forward or how much of it is posturing because it's going to hit you in the wallet? We also oh, talked about it too, Scott, who are like, okay, cool. You apologize. Let's see what he does next. Right. Yeah. Is he going to go right. back into his word and then not follow through? Or is he going to go do a million other amazing things that he's done in the community? And that's what speaks louder than an apology. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, but now, but now there's this, this expectation like, okay, well, I'm not going to accept Drew Brees' apology until he does something really big. And when he does something really big, then I'll know he's sincere. And until that time, I'm going to be suspicious about Drew Brees. And I think I, I know what's happening. Like, you can just be that way. You just be that way, Scott. <laughs> no, no, Billy Ray, I'm actually not being that way. I think that I think me and, that me and Browner are that way. That Alex and John are being that way. And and I think that maybe a lot just of me. other and I think I think no, no, Shan, no, 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 you're not alone. No, and I think I mean so so you're gonna you need for Drew Brees to do something to prove to you that no. he's sincerely sorry. See, for me, I actually think this. He's sorry for what he said, how it was received the stupidity of the statement and not knowing the history, guilty. He's also upset and sorry because it hurt his family. It hurt his good name. It may have hurt his sponsors. It may have hurt the league in some way, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Is he sorry 
for all of it, my guess, I'm not speaking for him today, my guess is, yeah, he's probably sorry for all of it. Um, does he now have to do something, you know, really epic to, to prove to everybody how sorry he is? You guys say yes. No, you know, not at all. He doesn't do anything. Like, I, he doesn't have to do anything. I'm, I'll, I'll, you're asking me if I think his apology was sincere. I say no. Now, if he does something, I'm not expecting him to do anything, nor do I care if he does anything. It's not, I don't, it's not for me to judge him. It's, it's people on Twitter that go crazy and judge him. I don't care what he does. I, and I, I, that, but you ask me a question he, and, if and, I found it sincere I, and I, I say do, no. Because Breeze is a, is a friend of mine and he told, he told everyone that he was going to act on his apology in the future. And that's enough for me because I know Drew Breeze. If, if people don't know Drew Breeze, hey, get to know him and then you'll believe him. I think the base of this whole thing, though, goes back to, Scott, what you said originally. And, John, you touched on Like, Mark Twain said, uh, what's that? I love this line. He said, don't ever let um, school get in the way of a good education. <laughs> and, you know, and I think that that rings true because, like, I think when we first started the show, I don't know if Alex got it on, but I showed you a book I was reading, right? About mm -hmm. Finnish lessons, right? About the Finnish education system because I- 2.0. Like 2.0. Can we see that book again? Finnish 2.0. Because 2 in this country, mm -hmm. in this country, um, I'm, I'm disappointed with the public education system. You know, and I think that, and I think it speaks to a lot of what you're saying too, John. And, you know, I, I've sat and I've listened to um, lectures, which I find fascinating, even with my daughter in college, and I heard a line the other day that a teacher said, a professor, and I just about, my head just about came off my body. And she said it with such absolute conviction without sharing the other side or any other perspective. And she said it and she said, well, clearly this because of this. And I'm like, ah! and my daughter just grabbed the computer and went upstairs. She, ran away. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't want me to jump in on the class. Um, but I said to her, I said, you know, if, if we're gonna be critical thinkers, you know, you've got to put it all out on the table. You can't just put one way of thinking out there. And then we all go back into our, our corners and we look at the perspectives that we've had and how we've lived life. And then you try and put yourself in someone else's shoes. And that's kind of how, it, how we evolve, you know. Um, but, yeah. You know, it's, you know, but, you know, Linda, it's so interesting. You look at now what's, what's gone on. And this is where this whole conversation began. What's happened in the last time since we've all been together? I find this story um, today about, and I guess John actually brought it up a couple days ago. It was completely not on my radar. You guys know who the head football coach is at Oklahoma State? You guys, Mike I mean, I, Gundy. Yeah, Mike Gundy. I'm a man. I'm 40. That's 10 years old, and it's still stuck in my head. And uh, this guy, there was a picture of him out on a fishing trip. And he, if, if you don't know he's the head coach <laughs> of Oklahoma State, you think he's on some reality TV show about like guys who jump in lakes and take down alligators. I mean, he, <laughs> he cannot look more. Oklahoma. Uh, yeah. I mean, he's got on what looks like a camouflage hat with a, with a, um, uh, with a mullet, mullet. kind of long hair in the back. He's got his sunglasses over his ball cap and he's wearing a t-shirt that says O A N. O-A-N. Now, I would ask you guys this question. Not you, John. I know you would know this. But, Linda, what is O-A-N? Do you know what O-A-N means? Mm. Off anglers. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, let me, let me ask you a different question. Do you know what CNN is? Uh, cable News Network. How about Fox News? Um, what do you mean? What does Fox stand for? You, you, no, you know what it is, right? You know it's yeah, a TV? I do. Okay. How about One yes. American News? Okay, One American News. Hmm. Now, now, does anybody here know what channel? I can tell you CNN is channel 26, and I think I can tell you Fox News is like 35, and CNBC is 49. That's my local cable. So I know the channels. Does right. anybody here know what channel? What, what's it called, Billy Ray? OAN? What's it, I, I, what, what does it mean, stand for? Uh, it, it goes One America through News. One America. Oh, One America News. Sorry, yeah. One America News. Anybody have any idea where One America News is on their television channel? One? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good guess. That's, That's a good guess. Thank you. I just, you know, I felt it. 
I know it's good. That's funny. I don't know. I, what is it? I don't, I don't know. I, I, but, but what I, and I also didn't know, you ready? Did you guys know that one America news, which I I've never seen is apparently like the most right wing, crazy conservative arm of media, like, like, like Fox news on Barry Bond steroids, uh, Mark McGuire steroids. Sorry. Um, <laughs> And, and they're based here in San Diego. I had no idea. And let me tell you something really quick. A couple of years ago during the stadium drama, I remember there was a guy who used to be a newscaster here in San Diego. I believe he was on channel eight. His name was Graham Ledger. And mm-hmm. he was a, he was a, you know, news reader in, in, I remember in him. the evening news. And he called me one day and he said, Hey, would you come on with me to talk about the NFL and stadiums and everything else? And I said, yeah, sure, man. Uh, where are we going on? And he said something and I never paid attention. And he was just a guy I happen to know. So I said, yeah, okay. I mean, I couldn't, I kind of couldn't say no. So I go on the air with this guy, Graham Ledger, and we have this conversation and I find out that it was this channel, One America News. Now this is four or five years ago. Had no idea who they were, had never heard of them, have never seen them, don't know what channel they're on. And I don't know about you guys, but if and when I go fishing, pretty rare, but if I do, I'm going to take any shitty t-shirt I can find. Cause I'm like, this is going to get blood on it. It's going to be garbage and throw it away. I don't ever need it again. So what's my worst t-shirt in my drawer? Oh, this one. Now I don't know what happened with Mike Gundy. He may be the biggest OAN watcher on planet earth, which would make him the one and only, but, <laughs> but, but now to have a player, a college football player, this shit's about to change, man. This is unacceptable. Hey, I'm not going back to Oklahoma State until things change. And I think to myself, young man, before you commit to a college, if politics and people's positions on politics are critically important to you, ask your coach. Hey, coach, I, I'm really contemplating signing here. I really think it's a great program. Love the stadium. I think it's awesome. You watch OAN or you watch CNN? <laughs> <laughs> because based on that answer, it depends on whether or not I go to Oklahoma or Oklahoma State. And I just, I, I, this whole world now from Colin Kaepernick now has the commissioner of the NFL apologizing and encouraging the league to sign him. Big changes. Drew Brees didn't know American history, embarrassed himself, forced to apologize for whatever reason you think it is. Now I'm a man, I'm 40, and I got a young man who I've offended so badly by wearing a t-shirt. How about the rest of his look? Doesn't the rest of his look just scream redneck? My goodness. If that's so offensive to you, hey, wait a second. Don't There's play nothing for wrong with screaming redneck, Scott. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Your look yeah, shouldn't matter. Totally honest. And coaches, they, they should wear their team t-shirts and then they don't have to worry about it. <laughs> that's the easiest way to go, and that's worked for me. The sh- <laughs> the, like you said the, the shittiest T-shirt in your closet, Scott. The shittiest T-shirt in the closet should be an Oklahoma State T-shirt. Like, you got a whole <laughs> room full of them, dude. Oh, <laughs> wow. So, so, so what we should take away then, just to be clear, is that Mike Over Gundy my, <laughs> Mike, Mike Gundy is an OAN watcher. He's a supporter. That's his style of news, and it's his beliefs in politics. And guess what? I don't want to play for that guy. But listen, listen to this, though, Scott. This is, what, this is where I get a little bunched up. I'm going to find that station, and I'm going to start watching it. And the reason I'm going to start watching it yep. is because I want to know yep. what they're thinking. Mm-hmm. And, and that's why I watch I try to watch all, I try to cover them all. There's a podcast people might want to check out. It's called Left, Right, Center. And it's, and it's not Fox or it's not CNN. Those are two polarizing networks and they don't yell over each other and just get things the way they want it because it feeds into their narrative. It's one host, they have someone left, someone right, someone center, and they throw out the hot topic of the day and they calmly discuss it with facts. And they just, and it's a discussion. Um, but that's, you know, I think that's the thing, you know, if, if say I had, you know, my TV on and, and someone walked by and there's Fox news on, and then they throw a rock at my house. Do you know what I mean? You just, I don't know. People are just so polarized now and they're just, it doesn't mean that maybe I love that station, but I want to find out what they're saying. You know? I always, I, uh, yeah, uh, I always watch CNN. I always thought CNN always thought meaning years past i thought cnn was the down the middle this is where the news is it's not like that anymore okay, i'm out you know 
Yeah. See you guys. <laughs> it's it's CNN. Cool. Are you it's, kidding me? Well, news. Wait, well, well, wait a second. Hold on. CNN news, man. Oh, sorry, Billy Ray. Uh, sorry. You know, there's. I think we're talking cable network. news. We're talking yeah, cable, cable news. Cable, cable news networks, Billy Ray. <laughs> Not local but, news. But but I, I I literally I turned on CNN last night. I like to flip around, and I saw Don Lemon last night. And I, I, Don Lemon is a gay black guy who hates President Trump and et cetera, et cetera. And as somebody who probably leans a little closer in the, if here's, here's the left and here, I'm a little leaning over here. I'm like turned off as a viewer, like, dude, enough, man. Yesterday he was doing this whole thing about how Trump was walking down the, um, the, 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 the ramp, ramp at, at, mm. uh, at, at, um, the West, uh, West point graduation. And he was not stable. And he literally had a doctor on the air to analyze Trump's walking. There was a point where Trump goes to take a glass of water and he, he can't quite, yeah, and he pushes it up. And I'm like, yeah, he's 74 years old, man. And he's going hard, this dude. And I just, I find like this constant nitpicking at everything. Well, Scott, change so, the channel. Well, so Billy Ray, hold on. I, what I do is I, I go back and forth because I actually like, like Linda, I want to see it all. I want to, I, I know that if, if, if they hate them here, I turn the channel five channels up and there, they're telling you how great he is. And I love to see all. So to your point, Linda, I don't know where OAN is. I don't know what channel it's on. I don't know who's on it. I don't even know what the content is, but I'm kind of looking now like I need to find it. And I'm curious to know what's going on. Um, but presidential commentary has always been heavy handed. I mean, they got after Barack Obama for wearing a tan suit and that was the end of the world at one point. I know that seemed like a very, very, very long time ago, but that was the thing that actually happened. When we talk about Mike Gundy and his t-shirt, Mike Gundy should be able to wear whatever kind of t-shirt he wants. I'm not, I'm not saying anything about his attire or his appearance. But if Mike Gundy is going to make millions upon millions of dollars coaching black athletes, he should be aware of what OAN does as a network and how that reflects on the players who he is supposed to coach. And, he, and he should be wearing I, his on. own T-shirt. His yes, own I team. can't. Jeez. I can't wait to hear from Linda after she watches OAN. It's going to be <laughs> fantastic. I've seen one clip. I've watched. I've seen one clip. You have watched it? I have, I have, when it, so here's a funny story. I worked at KUSI when they first launched OAN initially, and they were hiring producers and writers. And I interviewed over there. I'm talking about four minutes. I was out. I'm good. No, I see what y'all, and again, keep in mind, I was at KUSI. I love KUSI, but KUSI does their thing. OAN is, is, is like you said, Fox on ultra steroids. So enjoy it. It's an interesting watch. It's an interesting watch. I have a question. Let's go back in time. Let's, let's, let's turn the time machine back one month ago when the news is still just concentrating on COVID and George Floyd is alive and well. If the George Floyd incident never happens, are we talking about Mike Gundy's t-shirt today? No. Okay. No, why, because why that picture why, why was never... But why is it not why why is it not equally as offensive regardless? Political climate changes, dude. What do you mean? Why? Dude, I, things I'm happen saying, in the world. Things happen in the world, and things come f forefront. Like we weren't I'm talking just, about Corona in January when Corona was killing people in China. I, well, it wasn't on my radar, right? But you know, now it and, is. So that's I know, why. And, and and I'm just saying that OAN for me, I didn't even know what it was. Um, I wonder how much this player, his name is Chubba Hubbard. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Um, mm -hmm. I wonder, top, top rusher I, in the country last year. Yeah, awesome. I, again, I didn't know. I mean, you just have to excuse me. I didn't know that he was the best running back in college football. Wasn't paying that much oh, attention it, to okay. Oklahoma State. It, it, it's okay. If he was third yeah. string, you, you would have never heard of him. Mm -hmm. Say again? I okay. agree with that. If what? If he was third, if he was third string, Mike Gundy would have cut him from the team, and nobody would have cared about that OAN shirt. And it oh right. Story. Uh, oh, there's no doubt that Mike Gundy's um, talking about, hey, I've got to be more sensitive, and I'm gonna, you know. And then there's a video of the two of them, and you know. That, By the way, that he didn't a, apologize at, Mike, at all. Mike but Gundy the, didn't apologize. Is that where he, he never apologized? Chubba, apologize for what? Right. Right. So, right. 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 What he there was nothing for him to apologize for. I want to be very clear about this. There's yeah. nothing for Mike Gundy to apologize for, but his level of awareness for what he represents for the state, for Oklahoma State, and the players that have agreed to play for him risk their physical bodily harm 
for him how that could be deemed offensive. Yeah. And that's what we that, think that's it'll be interesting talk about. It'll be interesting you know, to see if college players start taking it because college players, when you are a star player, I'm not saying Chubba Hubbard's a star player, but at Oklahoma State he is. It'll be interesting to see if college players realize how much power they actually have over their coach. If Trevor Lawrence mm-hmm. tells Davo Sweeney, you need to do this, dude, or I'm not playing next year, you don't he think Davo Sweeney's going to listen? Yeah, but you I know still- what, though? I think that the people who that – you know who Mike Gundy answers to? He doesn't answer, he doesn't answer to Chubba Hubbard. You know, he answers to uh, the guy who writes the big checks to put his names on the buildings. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he, that's who he answers to. But if he doesn't to. have Chubba Hubbard, he may not have a job. Okay. He may not. He may not. But, but let me ask you a question. Do you think, are his politics going to change, number one? No. And number two, do you think that the people who are paying him, this is Oklahoma we're talking about. This isn't California. Mm-hmm. This isn't New York. We're talking about the middle of the country. We're talking about the red states. The people in Oklahoma they vote red. They are Trump supporters. Th- that, that's reality. And so the supporters of the program- Joe Exotic got 20% of the gubernatorial vote. <laughs> that's Oklahoma, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. That's the state of Oklahoma. So and as the, far, the thing as is- As far as his t-shirt goes, when I go out walking, there's one t-shirt in particular that I wear, and I'm sorry, I'm not going to apologize for it when people ask me. And of course, it's the Scott and BR sh- shirt. There, there and everybody go. asks me about Scott, and I'm like, I'm sorry- yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't don't say don't say you know that you say something and it's like you got to be so careful about what you might say even if you're just trying to make a joke you know and, yeah, and so you've you learned got, that lesson so many times. Yeah, well, I've learned it a couple you still times. Haven't learned. <laughs> the, the no, I feel like I've learned. I feel like I've learned. Only Scott, now the difference is we don't have to worry saying about it. Well, well saying what? Well, what am I saying? Happened? Well, I feel like now, um, I, I got to say, honestly, you know, it's funny you say that, Billy Ray. I, I feel like right now, even not working for a radio station or not working for a company uh, that could be impacted by something that you say, or you got to be super careful. Even just being out in the, the digital world of podcasting, I think I got to watch what I say a little bit more carefully because you just never know how it reflects back on you. Um, and man, I mean, I learned that you, th- you talk about learning a lesson. You talk about back to Drew Brees and not understanding U.S. history and how much he offended everybody. How about Grant Napier, the, the play-by-play voice of the Sacramento Kings? I don't know Grant Napier as anything other than the voice of the Kings, occasional fill-in for Jim Rome, and the five times that I've said hello to him and given him a high five when I've been in Sacramento. But you, he said all lives matter, and that, that is a fireable offense no. in today's world. Well. We talked about this. But it's a fact. He did get fired. Be, yeah. He resigned. At the end, it was, it, it was stuff that led up to that. It wasn't just that. Because, again, if he had just said that, people would have asked him for, well, why would you say that? And it would have been a discussion. And then people would have said, well, Grant Napier believes all lives matter. We need to watch out for him. He didn't simply lose. He didn't resign because he said that. He resigned because things led up to him that by the time he said that, that had been enough. For some people who well, he got who he, he, for. he got fired. I mean, they called it a resignation. He got fired, and and you know you talk about not being able to handle the heat. The company he worked for, rather than saying, you know, I'll be right back. Okay, rather <laughs> rather. Than, break. Yep. Plumber, our plumber needs to turn on a machine. Hold on. <laughs> we can. I just, I, I think that, break. what did he, John, you, you know, I, I don't really know about the leading up to, I know about mm-hmm. the tweet. The tweet was, yeah, all right. lives matter. And the next thing you know, he was fired. So what, what's the leading up to? Right. Well, if you have guys like Chris Weber, you have guys like Boogie Cousins, guys like Matt Barnes saying this guy's racist and we've known about him a long time ago. So clearly there have been things that have been said by Grant Napier in between players before he got to this whole all lives matter thing that just opened it up for more people to be able to look into that window. Chris Weber, they're telling, they were already in the window telling you, uh, we don't really like this guy. This guy's racist. I, you know and what, now- John, I, I don't, I gotta be honest with you, man. To me, Boogie Cousins is not the most credible guy on the planet. Um, he was a lazy guy when he played for the Sacramento Kings. He was a big disappointment as a player for the Sacramento Kings. And if I, if I know Grant Napier, just knowing the nature of being a sports talk show host, chances are, rather than just kissing up to Boogie Cousins and saying how great he is, even though he wasn't, 
he, he probably criticized him. Boogie Cousins probably didn't like it. And guess what? Chris Webber probably didn't like it either. And so when, when you're criticized, you know, and, and you're, you're looking to fight back a little bit, um, to me, a lot of it was a big setup. Now, I'm going to take the other side, like Linda said. I don't know what he says behind closed doors, but I would say this. If he were as an, a known racist, if you're Boogie Cousins, if you're Chris Webber, you got enough clout to say whatever you want to say. And I find it hard to believe that guys would just allow him to be some closet racist and they would all not have a problem with it. I got to think that that would be a bigger problem. Chris Webber's career is over, what, 20 years ago? And now, 20 yeah. years later, I, I'm sorry, man. I, you know what? I know the angry crowd can bully everybody into saying everything. You either say what we want you to say or you're dead meat. I'm just here to tell you that I don't know Grant Napier's history of being racist in any way. Why would I know it? I'm a white guy. What's he going to do? Come up to me and, and say, a- say something racist? I don't know him as being racist. Do you know him as a fact of being racist? Do you know it as a fact or are you just taking their word? I don't know Grant Napier, but also these Billy people have had. That's true. He probably sacked him once. That's not <laughs> true, Alex. <laughs> Alex, I heard what you said. That's not true. Okay. I have to go to the backyard. We're doing a little, uh, a little project back there, Plumber. and so um, I got to go. Okay. But you guys have just a great time. Sorry, you guys. He's waited. The plumbers waited an hour to turn this machine on, and he won't to, wait anymore. But it's we all have good. A sink. Can you? Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us. God, Billy Ray is like so irritable. It's unbelievable how his, his, he's changed so much. He used to be the, the and I, I know you probably are thinking to yourself, don't even say this on the air. And, and, but I'm going to tell you, he used to be the most jovial, loving sweetheart. He, and yeah, he would joke around. He kind of push people around a little bit and kind of, I'm bigger than you. I'm the old linebacker. But man, does he seem, is it me or does he seem like ultra, ultra irritable at everything that everyone says to him? Well, he could be having a bad day too. Like, No, it's pretty much every single time I talk to him. It's, it's it? actually gotten more aggressive as the time has gone on. And I feel terrible about it because every time I want to invite him on the air, it's because I want him to still be seen and known and heard and loved. You know, so many people love him. You know, he put out a post on Instagram the other day. He never posts on Instagram. He never posts on Twitter. He only posts, hey, here's a link. My wife is up for the best anchor of the year award yet again. Please go vote for her great friends. You can go look at his Twitter timeline or his Instagram timeline. He's never on these platforms posting. And um, he only posts when it is, hey, vote for my wife kind of thing. He, vo- he put a picture on Instagram the other day of him wearing a San Diego Chargers mask. Um, not a face mask, but like just a, a mask that we're all wearing. And it said San Diego Chargers. And people were writing on the comments, hey, Billy Ray, we miss you on the radio. We'd love to hear you and Scotty back on the radio. And I like these things. And I'm, I'm like, me too. Gosh, I, I, I wish just like you guys, you remember hearing who Billy Ray was. And I'll never forget. He and I used to argue about this all the time. I'd say, why are you in the concussion lawsuit, Billy Ray? The NFL made you rich. The NFL made you famous. The NFL is the hand that fed you. You love being a former NFL player. Why are you suing them? And he would say to me, and it was brilliant at the time, because I don't know today, call it 2008, 2009. I don't know today what my body and my brain are going to be like in five years or 10 years from now. And I have to take care of my family should something happen. And he had so much foresight that he did join that concussion lawsuit because when he joined it, he was as, he was as Billy Ray as we all knew him and loved him. But he, he definitely knew that going forward based on other guys that I've seen, I just don't know what's going to happen. And man, it was, it was a good thing. He did join that lawsuit really. Um, so, yeah, because, well, that's I mean, Billy Ray though. That's Billy Ray. I mean, he's a, he's, you know, he's protecting his family. He's loyal. He's a loyal family guy. He's a loyal friend. He's, you know I mean? That's just his, his persona is whatever his, mood change maybe you know you know scott i don't have to tell you this well no i mean you've got a lot more experience around you know your mother and her her alzheimer's and you've you've told me you know 
but, but I mean, I, I clearly can tell and I'm everybody else can tell too. It's not a secret. I mean, I don't know what you guys, you, John and Alex, you guys might be thinking, dude, enough. Don't even talk about this, but it, it, it saddens me. Like you have no idea. If I were to tell you stories of, of Billy Ray and the things that he has done for me in my life, especially when he was younger and just was a completely different type of personality than he is today. It, it will bring tears to your eyes. The incredibly generous things that he has done for me. Me too. I, and, I feel the same way. I mean, let's, we, like case in point, Operation Sasquatch. I think we all know about that. Right? I mean, you know, you know well, what Operation, happened there. Operation Sasquatch, for those of you that don't know, is I got fired um, for calling a, a female broadcaster Sasquatch. And it was, it was supposed to be funny. And most people actually thought it was. And by the way, it was about 6.08 in the morning. And I'm not trying to justify it by saying what time of the morning it was, but I'm just telling you that it was, it was a relatively benign comment. It was intended to be funny, you know, and sometimes comedy goes wrong, but it was hardly fireable by, con by contract. The day that they told me you're fired, they said to Billy Ray, your choice is you either go with him or you stay with us. And Billy Ray looked at the guy across the table and went, fuck you. Literally, that's not Billy Ray. He said, fuck you. I'm out of here. Our agent at the time went, whoa, chill out, big boy. Hold on. Calm down a second here. No, Billy Ray, no, no, no. I'm not having it, right? So Billy Ray stands up for me, defends me, tells the, the radio station he quits on the spot. They tell Billy Ray on the way out the door, you have one week to decide what you want to do. Billy Ray goes home, talks to Kimberly. Kimberly says, like most wives would probably say, don't, don't quit because your partner's an idiot. Don't, don't give up the money because Scott said something stupid. Get your ass back down there and go to work. Billy Ray walked right back into that radio station and they told him, no, you already quit. You're fired. He said, wait a second. You told me I had a week to decide. They said, it doesn't matter. We've already made up our mind. They had Dave and Jeff on the radio the next day. They, 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 they had fired us, knew they, they fired me, probably anticipated that he well, would quit. But but let's jump to the end of the story. You won the lawsuit. Well, the end of the story was Billy Ray said to me, look, he goes, now that they've screwed me over too, I'm ready to join your lawsuit. And together we teamed up like we normally would, would do. And we won the lawsuit. And then we went on to have another seven or eight years on the radio of, of tremendous success. But, um, but I'm telling you, he sat, he quit on the spot. And then I got many other stories, dude, many other stories that, that would tell you, what was going on way back when. I, and it just makes me, it just makes me so upset at the NFL as someone who loves football. It makes me so upset at the NFL that the older generation of guys who are experiencing what Billy Ray is now experiencing are not properly taken care of by the league. You know, and it's interesting because Burt Grossman came on here and ripped Drew Brees, not just because of what he said about kneeling, but because he did not defend all the old players. Pretty Burt quoted Drew as saying, hey, if they didn't take care of their money, that's their problem. I don't have to give them my money for them. You know, Billy Ray, though, is he was a staunch defender, you know. It's just, it's just upsetting to me. I'm venting to you guys. But, I mean, to see Billy Ray not the same dude he once was, you know, it just upsets me. That's all. So about that Mike Gundy t-shirt. You guys think, uh, no, wait a second. You guys Actually, think baseball's I coming back? <laughs> I, just had a, I had a quick question before, before you, you kind of launched down that road. Cause you said something, Scott. And I was like, well, okay. So what do we do about this? What do you do about if one person has an opinion and it's, it's the, it's the polarization that's getting way out of control. People just aren't talking anymore. You're just looking like you, okay, so that's a, that's an orange pill. You like orange? Well, you're a loser. Well, you're this, you're that. I mean, it's, it's, that's the one thing. I mean, John, I, I mean, I just absolutely love about you. And this was, this happened, I don't know how many years ago, but when we first, I first probably did an appearance with you. We were out at a model home thing and we had the hamburger truck there. You remember that? Oh like yeah. That, nobody that showed was up. <laughs> <laughs> it was too hot, <laughs> and we and there's John and I so and a truckload of hamburgers, so right? <laughs> and we're sitting there, and we were just like, "Well, we got what two and a half, three hours here," and we talked about some deep stuff that day. And I didn't really know you, but but it was just we we talked about um, race, we talked we talked about everything, and it was just um, I walked away feeling great. I hope you did too, but it was just something that I wish we could do more of because people aren't doing that. Well, it's like, if you vote for this person, you're that. 
Well, you know, I know that, people who voted for Trump and they're not awful people. You know, to that end, Linda, it, 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 that, thanks for getting me back on track. Cause again, I, I got caught up in my, my sadness over, you know, the, my, the differences of my, my, my longtime partner, you know, um, Thursday afternoon, we are recording a summit where, cause this is what I, this is what I said after the Drew Brees thing. I, I don't need to wait for Drew Brees to do something to try and do my part to help. I keep hearing this message um, from black people and from white people. If there's going to be legit change in this country, if we want legit change, white people are going to have to contribute to it. White people are going to have to stop saying, no, I like it the way it is. Hey, for me, it's great. You know, for me, it's awesome. Now I got to go to high school. I graduated high school. I went to college. I got a college education. I got myself a good job. I've made myself a couple of bucks along the way. I've got four healthy white kids. Boy, life is great for me. If, if, if there's going to be real change in the world, then the guy like me, the guy like Drew Brees type of person, we're going to have to contribute to it because we're going to have to want it. Well, I Everybody want does, though. Everybody does. I, I, I know, but what I'm saying to you is, is what I'm hearing is, what, what I'm being fed is, hey, white people, will you please finally help in this cause? And I know for me, I said to these guys, I said, fellas, we don't have to wait for Drew Brees to do something. We can do something. So on Thursday afternoon, we are getting together with Landon Donovan. Uh, most of this is being put together, John, jump in, with, with the San Diego Loyal. But mm -hmm. we're, we're taking James Blake, the former tennis star, with Landon Donovan, James Blake, um, uh, Howard Wright, who's a former star basketball player from San Diego and went to Stanford and played in the NBA, and he's now an executive at Intel. Shelly Zimmerman, the former chief of police. Shannon McMillan, the former World Cup champion soccer player. And we're taking a collection of individuals, male, female, black, white, and we're putting them together to try and say, look, what can we do? The only thing we think we can do is teach people to communicate, to have the open dialogue that you're talking about that you had with John, that the three of us here have literally every day, white guy, Hispanic dude, black guy. And the three of us every day just go deep. We get honest and we get raw with one another. And well, if we can take that and, and infuse other people who have influence or have stories or can be um, helpful and we can put them all together and communicate openly and honestly, we're doing our small part to virally spread peace, love, understanding, tolerance, and all these things that, that the, the guy like me, who's been living the good life, the white life for all these years, you either choose to help or you say, no, my life's the way I want it and I don't want to be bothered with your life. And so that's what we're trying to do with this conference that we're putting together. We're actually shooting it on Thursday and then we'll air it on Friday. And John, I know that there's a TV component to all of this too. Is that right? Yep. It'll be airing on Friday, obviously, the, for, through our channel. And then it'll also air on the CW Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. So yeah. it'll, it's going gonna, it's gonna to reach a lot of people and hopefully it can make a difference. There will also well, be uh, charities attached to it. And if you want to make some form of donation or help out, there'll be a T-shirt available for you to purchase and all the proceeds will go to that charity. Yeah. You know, th this goes back to exactly what um, Game Changers is. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I know game changers. Yeah. And, and Sean invited me. To, I don't know if you, you ever went to yeah, any of those meetings. I, I, have, and I, I just spoke I to him. I, sp I spent an hour on the phone with him the other night. I know. And um, yeah, he's, he's a great guy. And, and, and when I went, it was, I was blown away because it, it wasn't just about basically what game changers is. It really in a nutshell, uh, getting just like you said, all different people together from all walks of life, socioeconomic color, we sit around and we talk about the topics and what's bothering and why it bothers. And, and then at the end, everybody goes to a sporting event because he feels like sports brings people together, which is true, right? Sports can really bring people together. So, so the cops go to games with like people from the neighborhood. Yes, everybody. You know, and you've got pastors, you've got police, you have FBI, you have, you know, grocery store worker, teachers, everybody involved. Um, and it's a really good organization. I mean, he, he's done just an amazing job with it. But um, then I asked him, I said, well, okay, so you sit around and you talk. Well, I feel like we're all talked out sometimes, you know, then what? And he said, then this is where it gets good. He said, it, you know, at the end of the month, we comprise call to action items 
and we pick what are the most important, what are the hottest topics, and how are we going to change them? Like one of the things he, he's, was, they were trying to implement was at the DMV. The DMV, they were going to implement a thing where you go to the DMV and part of the test, your driving test, was protocol when you get pulled over. That's, they wanted to incorporate that into as part of their thing. Like, like what, what is expected of you? What are you expected to do? What is this whole thing? So it's like anytime an issue, because, you know, that's, that's one of the biggest, I mean, and that's not, that's not the full answer, clearly. I mean, we have to go after the police department there. But it's a start. And they had call to action so that it's like, what can we do? How can we change rules? How can we change laws that will affect the problems? Not just talk about it. Yeah. Well, I mean, listen, that's what we're going to, we're going to start with talking and that's, that's the first thing. And it's kind of the only thing that I think that we've got in our toolbox that we can do to help right well, now. Shelly Zimmerman there, you can, you know, take well, it no, we're going we're gonna, we're gonna to talk to Shelly Zimmerman. I, mean, we t- I spent an hour with her on the phone last night. You have no idea how much time I'm having to put into this. And John is putting a ton of time into it as well. And that, you know, Alex is you know, running the whole operation here. So he's busy as hell too, but and I've spent, I'm spending hours on the phone with people because they want to talk about these things before we ever actually record these things. In fact, you know, we, we were really going to do it on Friday, on Juneteenth, but we actually had to move it to a day earlier so that if there's any editing that needs to get done and whatever. Um, and for me, I can tell you guys, it became incredibly inconvenient because my daughter has a doctor's appointment at Children's Hospital about an injury that she's dealing with, and I really want to be there. But I oh, feel sorry. so packed. I know, but I feel, and, and believe me, we had the date on Friday. It was moved to Thursday. That, but I know that this can be so important and so impactful that I'm willing to say to my daughter, you're going to have to go to the doctor and you're going to have to get your mother and you have to give me a full report. I can't, I cannot go because this is, and believe me when I tell you, I wish I was going to the doctor. I really do. But I, I've committed to this now and, and I, I'm, I got to see it through. And so, and I want to be impactful. So but the other, you know, thing, you know, the funny thing is, you said you talk to them; they want to talk about it before they get on the air. Yeah, that's not your style, Scott. You have to it's not. Them. I know, but it's. Yeah. I know, but I know, but you know, this is such a hot topic, and people are so afraid of it. You know, no one wants to be labeled a racist. No one wants to be seen as as you know purely defending one side or the other. No one wants to be backed into a corner. Oh, I'm white. Everybody's putting it on me. I mean, it, it, people are fearful of these topics, you know? I think I think the goal at the end of the day from this conversation is to try to get people to understand when you're trying to, there won't be a consensus reached on anything. But the main thing we can all do is find out what we don't know and try to help bridge the gap on what we don't know and what we know now. Because like Scott said, a lot of times these things are happening and you don't know because you've got your own life going. Alex has his own life going. Linda's got her own life going. I got my own life going. But at some point, if we all four sit down, we can put what's actually happening in the center of the table and work out what each person does and knows so we all leave the table educated. And that's the point of the summit is that everyone who sits down on this Zoom call, when it ends, they get up from it, educated about something that they didn't know. So can the I, goal is... Can I, I'm sorry, can I make a recommendation though with, with Sean's uh, Game Changers? And this is to your point is... Uh, you know, people are afraid. They want to talk about. It. They don't want to say this. They don't want to say that. In the beginning of the game changers meeting, there's a, there's a thing that's read, and those are the rules of game changers. And it is all about no judgment. You can't use hostile words. You can't. You know. So there are rules before you go into this, and it just makes for such a great environment. I mean, maybe you should. I mean, I'm gonna call him today. I, mean, I talked to him the other day, and and uh, you know, like I said, another hour on the phone. Yeah. Um, and he's in LA now, not that it matters. Cause you know, this is going to be a zoom call, but, um, he's moved to LA, you know, he's gone. He's like, dude, the, the, you know, what I can do and how impactful I can be in the LA market versus the San Diego market. It's just night and day, you know? And, and again, because game changers as an organization needs sports as a part of what they do. Mm-hmm. Ain't no sports, right. ain't no sports in San Diego. Yeah. Even, even yeah. when there are sports there are no sports. So, Hey, listen, um, I guess to wrap things up, um, I should just make, oh, what was I going to, I wanted, I got a lot of stuff I wanted to get into today. Oh, here, here's probably the, the last thing I would say about today. You know, today's six years since Tony Gwynn has died. Mm-hmm. And you, you talk about the world passing by, things happening fast, the world ever changing. I and mean, when I hear 
it's the anniversary of Junior Seau's death. It's the anniversary of Tony Gwynn's death. I'm like, wow, six years have gone by since Tony Gwynn has died. And I, I, you can probably just hear it drop. I, I have this bat that Kurt Babakwa gave me. And um, Babakwa is going to see this and probably want it back, but it's mine now. <laughs> um, this is Tony Gwynn. This is from the 1997 season, I want to say. I guess I should probably get my facts straight. Yeah, 1997 season. He was the batting champ, and he hit 372 that year. He had hit 400 late into the season, and he had some injury issues and whatever. But he hit 372. They had 372 of these bats made. This is 179 of 372. And, and Tony signed it. This is after, you know, he'd gone into the Hall of Fame. So this was, you know, this is now 10 years after the fact. And so it just – it's hard to believe that, that when we have these sorts of issues and we have sports figures doing a lot of talking, you know, LeBron James, I give LeBron James so much credit. You know, Michael Jordan never had a damn thing to say his entire basketball career other than pay me, tell me where the girls are, tell me where the casino is, and get me a drink and a cigar. That guy didn't have one thing to say his entire career. I give LeBron James so much credit for being willing to put himself out there as a leader in a community, not just a community of black people, young people. And, um, and so, you know, it's just, it, again, you, you think about sports figures, leadership, where we are in the world, th- people who might have opinions. Unfortunately, it's been six years since Tony Gwynn left. How about that? Mm. Yeah. Hard uh, to believe. Hard to believe. Okay. Listen, um, thank you to the entire Mishbucha. Linda, it is great to see you. Great to see you guys. Always. Yeah. Uh, John Browner, nice big smile there today. Yeah, boy. Looking good. Grande, the the voice of reason as always, chilling, thinking, marinating, analyzing. Nice work. When's Grande getting married? That's the question. Real quick. When is all this going to stop, dude? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that way, would be the here. dumbest thing to do is to plan a wedding right now without knowing what. <laughs> dude, no, no, you, you got it all wrong. This is the smartest time to do it, dude. Get married oh, now on Zoom. Get married on Zoom. It's going to cost you nothing to do it. Everybody will be there. It'll be great. You, can, well, you don't have to leave your apartment. Good thing for me is that my location is set. It's a family member's house, so I'm not really too worried about it. I can get a DJ and a caterer anytime. <laughs> right. Okay, there you go. Anytime. All right. Well, Linda, it is great to be with you. Stay healthy, stay yeah, safe out there. And, uh, and we look forward to the next time we all get together and visit. Yeah, for sure. Did you see Tom Brady in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers jersey today? I looked away. Alex. It officially came out, like not I Photoshop, like he put on the jersey today, Linda. Yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult. Why? Shouldn't you be a Bucks fan now? It's no, ugly. Not a Bucks Those fan, but I'll, I'll always be a Brady fan. I will always be a Brady fan. Mm-hmm. I think you like Jimmy Make Garoppolo more that. than Brady. You what? I think you like Jimmy Garoppolo more than Brady now. Yeah, I kind of do. <laughs> That's an ugly jersey, man. I don't care what nobody say. That is one ugly jersey. I don't care who put it on. What do you do? Put on the creamsicle jersey or something? No, they they got new jerseys, and mm-hmm. uh, Brady p- modeled them off today. I can try and find it real quick. Hey, let me see it. I'm going to look it up real quick myself. Uh, I'm looking for it. I mean, he looks good in anything, let's face it, but – Oh, man, I just Googled Brady jersey, and it's just all Patriots jerseys. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so much for that. There you go. Oh, there he is. Oh, oh God. That, oh, that looks great. That looks awesome. Way to go, Tom. Yeah, Tommy. Thank you. Way to go, Brady. Looks just like Matt Ryan in the Atlanta Falcons uniform. <laughs> Jeez, God, it's so hard to believe. All right, Linda, um, thank you very much. We'll see you real soon. Okay, guys. Take care. Take care.